Hey everyone, how's it going? AD here. So, I've seen on the Facebook Battletech page and a few other, um, I follow a few other uh, Rotech YouTubers as well, and I've seen some questions being asked about, you know, how you start Rotech, why is it so difficult, things like that. So, I'm just going to do a quick video to take people through the opening of Rotech. Uh, my first suggestion is, well, Rotech and Battletech are are essentially you know at its base level the same type of game you need to completely forget about Battletech when you start to play Rogue Tech because the game play itself is different you need to use a different mentality and a different mindset when you start off with Rogue Tech uh, if you try to carry over your Battletech strategies into Rogue Tech uh, you can find it very frustrating at first because a lot of this a lot of the um, tactics don't necessarily carry over. So what we're going to do is we're going to start a new game and we're going to have a look at this screen here which is the new difficulty settings. So you need to pay attention to everything kind of below this this box at the top here. This is all the new Rogue Tech stuff. So um, what I wanted to let you know about this is this is really going to dictate how hard your game is going to be. Now these difficulty settings can be changed during your game and when you change them, with the exception of you know starting planet and things like that, you can change some of these, um, but you have to basically quit out of Rogue Tech and then relaunch it and come back in for them to take effect. They don't take effect immediately. Uh, so things like uh, parts for mech assembly, you can go back down to three if you want, or you can go to eight. If you're just starting out, my recommendation you know, might be to go down to three. Uh, they recommend you start at five, but that can be a little more difficult. I usually play at eight um, because I like the idea of having to to really work for my mechs. So what I'm going to do here is as I go through, I'm just going to talk about each setting and I will show you normally what I play at. Um, so starting planet here, this basically dictates where you're going to start off and what your starting mechs are. Now keep in mind too, this screen might, might change as the uh, Rogue Tech mod is as being developed for Battletech Flashpoint. So this kind of thing might change, but basically it's going to be roughly about the same. Some things might change, like they may give you a chance, choice of starting mech uh, eventually. Uh, in the old version they gave you a choice of starting mech, but here your starting mechs kind of depend on where you start. So, um, and each will be different. Like I've played a, a, a Tortuga um, campaign already and right now if you check out my Funky Steve's Medinas we start off in Tortuga and it seems that the uh, Jaeger mech pirate version is sort of the you know sort of main um, mech of that kind of um, selection and depending on where else you start you will start with different mechs so um, since normally in the game you start off in, the, in um, Steiner space I'm going to just choose Steiner as the uh, starting planet so it'll choose the um, the, the selected planet for Steiner to start off at. Um, mech recovery chance. If you're worried about losing your mechs, if they get destroyed in combat, you can set this to 100%. And this will give you a 100% chance to get your mech back. So um, KIA, if you notice here in the recovery chance, uh, KIA is plus 10% and eject is plus 50%. So if you had it set to where we had normally started it out, which is 50. If your pilot ejects, you get the mech back. It's 100% chance at that point. But it's if he's killed in action, you know, you've only got a, like if the mech is killed in action, for instance, um, you've only got a 60% chance to get that back. Uh, I usually set mine at 60, slightly higher, gives me slightly higher chance for a KIA back, but um, that's about it. Um, and I've lost mechs. I won't say that I haven't. Um, but, uh, and it is disappointing sometimes when you lose mechs, but you know, it is a part of the game. So going to 100%, if you haven't played the game before, it's a good idea to go to 100%. Uh, if you have, then, you know, decide on what, how often you're willing to lose a mech or not. Enemy force strength, you can make it very, very easy when you're starting off. So you're not like getting overwhelmed and killed. I usually leave this on normal. Uh, I'm not really into like really hardcore uh, play styles. I know certain people love to play at really hard levels uh, and it can be a challenge. I, there's 
you know, no denying that. But um, I also don't like it, my game taking forever and getting frustrated constantly. So I leave. I usually leave my setting on normal here um, for four strength. Uh, contract uh, difficulty variance. So when you select this, this is how many half skull variances um, from your base lance level the contracts will generate at. So for instance, if you have a two skull um, sort of your top four mechs are what they rate it as. So if your top four mechs are rated as two skulls, um, then and you choose two here, then you'll get contracts generating um, with a variance between one skull and three skulls. Because each of these count as a half skull, so that's a full skull. So one and three skulls your missions will generate at. Uh, normally what I like to do is I like to leave this on two to start. That way most of the missions that you generate um, will be within your capability of doing. Now I like to run more than one lance uh, later on in the game. So later on in the game, I'll change this to five, which means if I'm operating at like a three skull uh, rating, um, I'll still get half skull missions and I'll get five skull missions. So my higher level lances uh, will be able to take on the tougher uh, contracts and my lower level lances will be able to take on the lower contracts. And it allows me to, to you know, just have a variance in play style. But that's completely up to you what you want to start with. You can start at zero so that it's forced to take whatever your level is. Um, if you like an easier challenge to start with, one or two is a good idea because if you're rated at one, then you'll get still get half skull missions. If you're rated at one and a half, you'll still get half skull missions. And you'll be able to take missions that you're able to do a little easier. So you can leave it there. Commander experience points. Pretty much uh, self-explanatory. Actually, sorry, uh, I gotta go contact, contract payment first, sorry. So, um, if you're worried about how you're gonna do, you can set this to generous so you get paid a lot of sea bills for your missions. Um, or if you want a real challenge, you can go down to Cheapskate and get paid nothing. Uh, I like to leave this on normal, only because the way I play the game, I generally don't sell mech parts for cash. So all the mech parts I get, I'm not allowed to sell. That's kind of how I play. So I leave it on normal so that I am getting some sea bill influx. And you will need Seabell Influx because you have drop costs that you need to pay when you drop your mechs down based on their, their weight uh, and their value. So uh, you will need to pay money to drop your mechs into combat. So you will need to get Seabills back. So I leave it on normal. Um, once again, you can go to Generous if you're worried about that kind of stuff. Uh, salvage. This is the kind of salvage that they will give you. Normal, Generous, or Stingy. I go on normal. Normal is slightly below the battle tech. Uh, normal so for instance you know 317 salvage is like I think it ends up being 313 or something like that so the salvage is slightly less but not much generous salvage will obviously give you a good amount I usually leave this on normal um, commander experience points uh, obviously this is a pretty obvious one I usually set it to 10,000 and there's two reasons for me setting this to 10,000 uh, not because I want to have a really awesome commander but generally the commander should have more experience than the rest of the pilots so on a role play, uh, um, for a role play situation, it's good to have your commander with more experience. For the second reason, um, all of my other mech pilots, normally when I start the game, and you'll see this a little later because we'll be starting shortly, um, I get rid of all my mech pilots that I'm given because I generally have good experience and I hire um, uh, mech pilots from the... Um, uh, the mercenary uh, review board so I have basically very low level pilots to start normally um, I like that challenge for my for myself personally I like the feeling of bringing up a, a group of young mech warriors from the beginning right from the start rather than having experienced pilots that have been around for a while that's just my personal experience so that's what normally what I go with advanced mech warriors this um, is pretty self-explanatory so if you're hiring mech warriors how often will advanced mech warriors spawn often gives you a good chance to pick up really advanced pilots so later in the game if you're looking for better pilots you can actually hire better pilots normally i set this to rare uh, i like it like i said i like bringing up fresh mech warriors from the very beginning and following them through their careers but if you're looking for advanced pilots leave this to often uh, ronin higher chance so these are the named pilots how often you're going to see the named pilots in um, the hiring hall and normally, uh, by, by named pilots, I mean it's the one with the special portraits and all that stuff, right? So you can have it, all of them, 
or very or next to none of them. And I usually put, set mine to never. Um, I've also found too that setting to rare and never doesn't necessarily mean they won't spawn. It's just next to never being able to spawn. So um, I set mine to never, like I said, because I don't hire those pilots. So, but you can choose what you want to do. If you want to have more experienced pilots and set it to 100%, you can have all named pilots. So that's kind of a cool idea. Pilots per system, this is self-explanatory. How many pilots will generate in the hiring hall when you go to the system? I, I usually leave it at five or set it to six. It doesn't really matter how many you set. If you set it to six, then it fills up the entire hiring hall first page. I think it takes six in a page. So there's six six mech warriors that show up. It doesn't really matter. Uh, mech warrior progression, how quickly they're gonna gain experience. You can do fast, normal, or slow, or very slow. So if you want them to gain experience fast, set it to fast, obviously. Uh, I set mine to slow. Um, I like to let the game sort of slowly progress as you move along. And it's not too bad if it's on slow, but if you, like, if you want more experience, you can set it to fast and gain more experienced pilots. And MechWarrior Exponent, and this is sort of like the multiplier here, if you hover over this real quick. Um, so it's the exponent of raising XP cost per level. So uh, if you are, if you have a low exponent, if I remember this correctly, um, it costs more per level going up. And if you've got it set to fast, it costs a lot less per level going up in experience. So I usually, I usually leave it at slow. I don't, like I said, I don't like fast advancing pilots. Uh, MechWarrior Multiplier is kind of roughly the same idea. Um, so this is uh, the multiplier of XP cost per level. So you know, basically how much it's going to be per, per level. I leave that on slow as well. Um, that's probably confusing, but if you play around with these, once you get into the game, you'll see. If you set these all to fast, your pilots will advance really, really quickly. Uh, if you set it to slow, they'll advance very slowly. So I like to leave, leave them on slow here. And it's not so bad. It really isn't that bad if, they're on, if it's set on slow. So lethality. How lethal do you want the enemy to be? Um, I leave it on normal. Um... This is uh, for pilots being killed in action. Uh, I'll leave it normal. If the pilot dies, he dies, right? It's just the way it is. You can set it to never, so your pilots will never die. Uh, if the mech gets blown up, your pilot will still be alive. So if you're worried about losing experienced pilots, you can set it to never and not have to worry about losing experienced pilots. And it's the same thing with the mech up at top. If you set that to, um, where is it here? If you set your mech recovery chance to 100% and your pilot, le pilot lethality to never, you won't lose your mech, you won't lose your pilot. It'll be trashed and your pilot will be out for quite a long time, but you won't lose them permanently. So if you're just starting out, that's a possible, that's a possibility as well. Um, starting money, you can change this. You can make it a lot of money or a little bit of money. I like leaving it on the default. Um, just depends on on what you like to do. If you, re if you really wanna, if you're really worried about money and stuff like that, you can set it on a lot. Um, but once again, it's completely up to your play style. Mech base speed, this is set to hard. Um, it's how fast they can rebuild your mechs. I like to set it to normal. Um, who wants to wait forever while your mechs are being fixed? Um, it's just a, I don't know, it's just a thing for me. I, I don't, like you can set it to forever, but if you really want to play the game and enjoy playing the game, then you know setting it to, to uh, faster or normal would be a good idea. Or you can set it to very hard and then that way you're like, making sure your mechs take absolute little damage as possible and you're changing your mechs. Everything, every time you change your mechs loadout, you really have to think about what it is you're gonna change and what you're willing to spend time on changing, right? So it just depends on your play style. I like leaving it on normal. It's kind of a balanced, uh, fair play style. Mech bay armor speed. So um, if you're um, fixing your armor, um, then this is how fast it will take for you to repair the armor. Uh, easy, quick, normal, very hard. I leave it on normal for normal play, but um, the general settings when you're installing Rogue Tech will set it so that you have to pay for armor repair. Normally in Battletech, you're fixing the internal structure only. Uh, with this, you have to fix both armor and internal structure, and they need to be repaired, so you have to pay for that repair. If you don't pay for it, then obviously your mech's going into battle with no armor on it. So you've got to get that fixed every single time you come back from from combat. So just keep that in mind. That's one of the biggest differences between Battletech and Rogue Tech. 
Battletech, when you come back, it's only your internal structure that needs to be repaired, and your armor is instantly back to normal. Whereas here, you got to fix the armor and the internal structure, and it takes time to do that. Um, and we'll be showing that a little bit... Uh, well, let's talk about that now, because um, to keep that in mind, when your pilots come back after a combat in Battletech, you can relaunch again and do another mission and do another mission. And you can do as many missions as you want in one day, right? As long as you're not fixing anything. Well, in Rogue Tech, when you launch a mission, uh, you play the mission, and when you come back, one day is advanced on the timeline. So if you're launching one day before your financial report, this is important to keep in mind, when you come back, your final your financial report will happen. So you have to make sure you have enough money in the bank. You're not going to get to sell anything from that mission. As soon as you come back from the mission, you got to pay out. So you got to make sure you have cash in the bank before you take that mission the day before your financial report. Something to keep in mind. Um, but uh, when your pellets come back from a mission, they're going to take time to rest and heal up, which can, depending on their gut skill, can be, you know, between, you know, you know, anywhere up to nine days. Normally, it's around six or seven, depending on your your guts level, it's like three or four. I believe the way they've got it set up, it's ten minus your guts level. So if your guts level is, you know four then it takes six days to, to rest if it's five it takes five days to rest if it's six it takes four days to rest things like that so i'm not 100 percent sure how it works but that, that's roughly how it works so you they, they your pilots are going to take time to rest then you got to repair the armor which takes time right it's not like it's going to be repaired instantly the more armor damage you take the longer it's going to take to repair it the more it's going to cost so you got to keep that in mind as well so you're not going to be launching missions one after another. There'll be some downtime between your missions. So just keep that in mind. Uh, mech bay sea bills. This is how much it's going to cost to fix stuff in the mech bay. So um, just keep that in mind. Um, if you're worried about you know taking a lot of damage and it costing you a lot, just set it to cheap. If you're first starting out, normal is what I play on. Uh, it's what I started on, and I didn't really have any any problems with how much it cost me. Uh, shop selling prices, so when you're selling your gear, how much you're getting back from the shop for it. So, you know, if you want to, you can set it a little higher to 20%. Um, 13, I find, is actually pretty balanced, so it's actually not a bad. Scrap return value is the same if you're scrapping mech parts or mechs. This is how much you'll get back percentage-wise. And it does give you the option to increase it if you want. So, if you're once again, if you're worried about cash flow, crank that up. Uh, max shop inventory. This is how much inventory will be in a shop when you go to a store. So it can have a maximum of 100 if you want. Um, I usually leave it on the default of 80. I don't see any need to change it back and forth. But if you want to make the game harder, you can lower it down. And once again, max specials per shop. So this is special inventory items like, uh, you know, bonus, like bonus weapons or different types of ammunition, things like that. Uh, special items that would normally not appear in the shop this is how many can possibly appear um, so you can crank this up as well or you can lower it down making them extremely rare I like to leave it on the default setting it's a default for a reason so just leave it there so that's basically the setup here if you're a newbie um, and you're like really really new at the game and perhaps not not good at good at what you're doing set mark met parks mech parts for assembly down to three make your mech recovery chance 100% um, lower the enemy force strength down a little bit just so you can get used to them increase your contract payment um, you can increase your salvage amount as well um, you know crank up your uh, commander's experience level set your mech warrior experience to fast so they can get uh, experience quickly um, remove the lethality so make the lethality never so your pilots don't die uh, increase your starting money. Um, you can lower your, inc well, increase your mech base speed um, and armor speed, rep like repair speed, uh, and lower your mech base C bills. And you can increase your shop selling prices if you want. Um, this, all those things will help you when you first start. Um, I'm not saying this to scare you, but if you're if you're really concerned, if you're only a mediocre BattleTech player. It's going to be tough to get into Rogue Tech when you first start. So doing things like that, maybe for your first run through or first try, might be a good idea just until you get a feel for the game because it is a little bit tricky when you first start. All right, so let's start the game. Commander. Yes, Commander. 
Okay, so here we go. We're at the uh, character summary screen now. Um, so I want you to keep in mind something here when we start this. This is going to change once they keep working on Rogue Tech. The one thing that they had originally was based on where you're from, um, what you did and all that stuff, uh, you would get um, specific items for each thing. So depending on where you started from, you would get certain items. So if you came from the Capellan Confederation, you started off with some stealth gear. Now these are extra components that would show up in your mech bay um, when you first started off. Um, currently that is not actually in this version. It, it will be in the future versions coming up, but um, right now it's not here. So at some point in the future you'll see that. So if you, if you see that um, after watching this, just um, you know it's there because They've, been add, they've added it later. So um, I'm just going to do something really boring here. So I'm going to take... Uh, Standing by. Uh, family came to the reach from Haus Steiner. So I was born in Steiner. After the 16th, my 16th birthday, um, I struck out Awaiting on my own. Orders. And after striking out on my own, uh, I became a frontier freelancer. Actually, you know what? No. I became an inner sphere mercenary since we're in Steiner space. So... Um, now, once again, these will dictate what your skills are going to be here. Um, so, for this game, originally, I mean, the thing you might want to take into account is, in this game, gunnery is going to be very important. And the reason why it's going to be important is because, at the very beginning, it's going to be tough to hit anything. Uh, this is the thing I found the biggest struggle that I had when I first started Rogue Tech was the much lower chances to hit. And it's based off your gunnery and a variety of other factors, like you know whether you sprint. Uh, you can sprint and fire in this game, by the way, uh, in Rogue Tech. You can't in Battle Tech, but here you can sprint and fire. So if you sprint and try to fire, your your chance to hit will be lower. Walking and firing is lower. Um, standing and firing is okay. Uh, but then you know once again you generate no evasion pips. Your evasion pips when you're firing your, at your enemies don't get stripped away. So focus firing an enemy becomes even more difficult because you're not going to be making it easier for your um, fellow mech warriors to hit them. You're just going to be shooting at them normally. Because if you really think about it in combat, um, that guy's going to be moving in a certain way and each person has to adjust for how that mech is moving. Technically the mech is still moving when you're shooting at it, it doesn't run and stop. So the evasion is going to be just the same for everybody shooting at it. You're not going to be able to strip its evasion away. So that's the way this game is laid out. So just keep that in mind. So um, I don't mind starting off with good piloting and good tactics. Uh, with this particular version of Rogue Tech um, and the way that the initiative system is done now with this version, um, piloting and tactics add to your... Um, basically will give you an increase in initiative overall. Uh, there's no longer five levels of initiative. There's 30 levels now. So, um, and it's based on a variety of factors. One, how high of piloting and tactics you have. Uh, so the higher piloting tactics, the higher your initiative. How heavy your mech is. So lighter mechs will, will have a higher initiative than um, heavier mechs. There's a random roll generation that happens, um, which will generally be more favorable for lighter mechs than heavier mechs um, but there's that that comes into a play as well and there's a few other factors that go on to give you your initiative so every turn your initiative will change for every mech so there's no longer that you know your assault mech is waiting until the end of the turn to go now if you have a really good pilot with high tactics and that assault mech he might be going before the enemy light mechs if, they're, if they have inexperienced pilots and a really bad role, right? So every turn it's going to change. So there's no longer that being able to necessarily plot out who's going to be shooting who at what time. There's a big randomness now to it, which I really, really like. Um, it just gives you a reason for having higher piloting and tactics at the start as well. So I'm not afraid so much of taking higher piloting and tactics. It just means I might be able to shoot first over the enemy, which can sometimes have more value than a higher chance to hit. Um, just being able to take a shot at an enemy that's almost dead before you can shoot you or inflict damage on you can be valuable. So, and plus we have 10,000 experience points to spend. So 
this really doesn't make all that much difference in the starting. So we're gonna change our name and experience, our appearance here. And I'm gonna go with my standard guy down here. Um, where are you here, buddy? Oh wait, we're gonna go to... Receiving you. Order. Nope. Welcome, Commander. There we go. So the pronoun has been changed to the voice for your commander. Um, I always go with onboard AI. Doesn't matter to me whether my pilot's male or female, it's irrelevant. I like the onboard AI because I like my main character to represent me. And why would I be talking in combat? It would be the AI talking to me. So, you know, that's why I don't generally go with, uh, um, why I don't go with a, a voice from my main commander. But you can, you can change your voice to whatever you want. So I'm gonna choose my, my main guy. We're gonna go ahead and customize this guy real quick. Um, just go with my standard layout here. And no tattoo, get rid of the scars. Hairstyle. Yep, and that's fine. Eyebrows are fine. Facial hair will leave. Expression will leave. Complexion, let's make them a lot younger. Uh, lighting, camera. And let's make this guy. Yeah, sure, we'll go this route this time. And black hair. Everything else is fine, we'll save. All right, so, and we're gonna change the name. Um, there we go. And we're just gonna call him, uh, gonna call him Ham Salad. Um, so 900 for Jesus, just so you know, was the name of the character I had in my um, Battletech Flashpoint campaign that came to an end a little while ago. Wasn't really having fun playing Flashpoint, so um, I stopped that, that particular campaign and have two individual uh, Rogue Tech campaigns going on. Uh, so I'm going to use his name for now because actually de it depends. I might actually, uh, depending on how we start off here, I might actually roll this into a series eventually, but... We're going to reincarnate 900 for Jesus for this one. Um, and if you don't know who uh, MC 900 for Jesus is, go look him up online. Um, you know, from a long time ago, he's one of my uh, one of my favorite MCs. But uh, let's save this. Welcome, Commander. All right, so there's our stats: gunnery two, piloting three, tactics four, guts two, and that's it for this. So let's confirm. All right, here we go. So here's our starting. You notice we start with the Argo. That's one big difference. Um, and if we have a look at the navigation, the star map, you'll see that the entire inner sphere is here. Now, uh, when you start the game, if you look around, you'll notice, if you go to in, you'll notice all these little flags here. And if you go right in on them, you notice there's a little Argo on it. Each one of these, there's like 16 people here at Galatea right now. Each one of these are individual players that are actually playing Rogue Tech right at this moment. Uh, so there, this is like basically an online map. So um, yeah, and you can contribute to flipping planets from one um, star system to another or one faction to another if you want. Uh, and then up here in the map, if we go all the way over here, these are the clan worlds, clan home worlds. So you can see they've got two avenues that they can actually make their way into the inner sphere. And they eventually will do that. I don't know who owns these right now. Let's take a look. Clan Ghost Bear. So Ghost Bear is making its way into the inner sphere here. Uh, and you can see here uh, underneath jump point 51, current control, Clan Ghost Bear 52%, planetary government forward, Draconis Combine 11. So the more missions you do for the individual factions on a planet, the more their percentage will go up. And if you do missions against an individual faction, their percentage will go down. So you can flip planets from one to another. Uh, it's, it can be extremely difficult, um, and there's a lot of other random factors that go on that I'm not 100% sure of at the moment. Um, but factions, planets will be changing over time, so just keep that in mind. So that's kind of cool. You notice here this is a uh, Comstar, uh, and they've got control of these planets right now. Uh, so if we go in here, and have a look. This is the star system that we start at, Tharkad, which is, I think, the capital of the uh, Laran Commonwealth. Um, yeah, capital of the Laran Commonwealth. So it's an icy planet, and it gives you all the list of stuff down here. Um, so let's go back. Planetary stuff is, you know, pretty much the same. So the first thing we're going to do um, 
let's let's have a look at the barracks. So when you start off in Rogue Tech, you're going to start off with a bunch of random pilots here. Now these are all going to be what I call named pilots. They've all they're all individual Ready portrait pilots. Uh, and as you can see, each one of them has got a fair number of experience points, uh, 6,500. Ready for orders. This guy doesn't have any, unfortunately. Waiting on you, Commander. 6,500. I'm here. 6,000, 6,500. So each one will be slightly I'm different. Here. And we start off with 10,000. So you're starting experience points. You can just choose what you want to take. I like to try and get everything to fours. Uh, and the reason for that is each one of these has got value now. So not, not um, taking any guts means that when your pilot comes back from a mission, he's going to spend longer time recovering before he can go on the next mission. He'll also spend longer time healing if he gets injured. So you want to kind of get that up a little bit to make it a little bit more reasonable. Tactics and piloting, both of these two will contribute to your initiative. So you don't want to uh, uh, not choose anything for those as well. You want to be able to keep yourself moving quicker, right? Uh, and gunnery is obvious, right? Your base chance to hit, which is better. So you don't want to neglect that as well. So a lot of times in regular battle tech, you know, you'll, you'll choose gunnery and then you'll choose your gut skill, which was bulwark, I believe. Um, but as you can see, juggernaut is now replaced bulwark. So this is basically your melee skill, right? And multi-shot is the same as it's always been, multi-fire, right? And then piloting, ace pilot is the first one. So you can you can uh, shoot before or after uh, you move, which is you know can be really really handy. And then tactics down here, you'll notice it's changed slightly. Gives you plus two resolve game and minus fifty percent critical hits taken. Now once again, like I said, this is you. This might be different when you first start your rogue tech because this is probably a little little older version of rogue tech that, than you're used to. So it should give you more of the stats over here as to what um, bonuses you're getting. Um, so I think at the start, usually multi-target is important. Um, not so much for evasion stripping off multiple mechs because you can't strip evasion, but because if you want to finish up more than one guy at once, um, this is a great way to do it. Also, don't uh, don't forget the value of tactician. With plus two resolve game and minus 50% critical hits taken, uh, you have much higher survivability because you'll have more call shots, you'll have more... Um, um, or you'll have less uh, critical hits taken against you. There are chances that crit hits can happen before it penetrates to the in internal structure. So having that minus 50% critical hits taken uh, reduces that chance of you taking a lot of damage. So if you have a bigger, slower mech, it's definitely good having Tactician on that pilot to reduce the crit hits taken. Um, but I'm going to start with the gunnery skill of multi-target only because it's giving me more chance to hit. When you first start off, this is a, it's a really good idea to kind of go up this line, depending on how you what, what you what you want your pilot to do. But that's pretty much a good idea. So let's just confirm. Training confirmed, Commander. And then you would go through and do the same yeah. with all your other pilots, deciding how you want to specialize each one. I'm not going to do that because normally I will just I'll just uh, fire all these guys and hire people out of the hiring hall. So if we quickly go to the hiring hall, it'll take a second to load here. So you can see now we've got six pilots in here. Um, Receiving you. We've got uh, this guy who's an advanced pilot. I can't actually get him yet because my uh, missionary review board rating is too low. But you can get you know relatively more experienced pilots if you want. Orders. Um, because pilots have quirks uh, in this game, you'll notice hey there. Um, depending on who it is, um, the cost per month might be different. So this guy's a noble, up, boss? right? Um, but uh, he has increased maintenance costs. Um, is there anybody else? So, yeah, so this guy here has got Tinkerer. And if you look at the bottom, he has improved mech repair times, which means he repairs mechs faster, right? Yes, Commander. Well, improves your mech repair time. Ready for orders. It's a slight amount. I don't think it's a, a huge amount, but um, the more guys that you have doing this are better, uh, the better. But um, you also end up with... Reporting. Um, or can end up with people that will give you a reduced price, uh, store cost price, things like that. There are so also some noble pilots that um, are Waiting ridiculously wealthy that actually cost you zero base salary per month. Um, and in my rogue, my rogue tech campaign right now called Cold Forged, one of my pilots is actually that kind of person. He's got zero base salary per month. 
And if you can find people like that, it's great because then you don't have to pay them, right? It's gonna save you money every month, right? So that's something to keep in mind when you go through the, um, when you go through the mech warriors here. It's some, you know, pay attention to their orders. secondary traits. Uh, and each one, aye, aye. when you go into um, the uh, barracks here real quick, Standing if you by. go to service record, it'll show you here uh, what their traits are. Um, so this guy's skill with uh, with the repair and maintenance of technology. So sometimes random encounters that you get, um, these will help you give different. These will help you get different results on the random encounters, which is really cool because I mean, uh, the the sort of bigger variety you have in your pilots. Like this is a, this guy's a Solaris Gladiator. Um, yes, command. The um, different outcomes you'll get on your um, uh, on your um, like here, here, it just shows you right here. So military increased, increase in minor increase in starting XP. Dependable bonus to resist pilot ejection. So your pilots can sometimes force eject based on their mood in combat. So if they're getting pummeled, you might get a pilot, one of your pilots ejecting in combat, and you don't have any choice out of that matter, right? So this guy's will will resist that. Uh, command moderate increase in experience cap, meaning this guy's experience caps will go up. Um, and less degradation uh, for fatigue. Um, so the more fatigue the pilot is, the more skill degradation they'll have. So if you try to put a pilot back into combat, their skills will drop uh, if they're fatigued. So you can do it. It's just not a good idea because they're going to be operating way below um, normal stats. So yeah, just go into this, you. check out the service records of your pilots. Sometimes you'll get criminal too, and it can be a... It can be a um, a uh, like arc light here. Aye, aye. It can be a bonus or a negative. So, um, criminal uh, chance to steal from company increased chance to find specials in black market systems, right? So she could steal stuff from the company. There's that one encounter that one uh, encounter that uh, basically has them stealing drugs from Medbay. Um, so there's an increased chance she'll do that. Um, but then, if you're in a black market system, you know which is if you look on the system stats on the side um, on the map it'll tell you if it's a black market system or not you get a better chance to find special items so you know there's an offset for being being a criminal so there's that so when we go to the mech bay now Check out I'm this sure mech everybody's manager. been uh, great, salivating right? to see what's here but let's have a look it's at our base like there's nothing I can't so here's what we start with um, you'll find some special mechs and some non-special mechs so this yeah there's still some glitches here, it looks like. There we go. So, um, Hunchback 4GG, uh, Ghost Rifle version of the Hunchback. So we've got this guy. We've got another 50-ton crab. This guy's a large laser crab. So he's a regular mech. So there's two regular mechs. Centurion A, another regular mech. AC-10, LRM-10, two medium lasers. Firestarter A, once again, another regular mech, right? And then Commando 2D BI. This guy's, I think, a new variant, um, but it's the laser version. This guy's got like tons of lasers on him. Great for backstabbing. Overheats quite frequently, but um, this thing can like backstab like nobody's business. And then a white, which is uh, based on a Panther chassis. Um, it's a light mech, but it's an advanced mech. So you'll notice here if we go into refit this guy. And what we'll do is we'll do, talk about the mechs inside here. So um, you can see the mech layout screen is way different than you normally get, right? Um, less leg room, right? But there's more center torso space because you can add and remove fusion cores now to speed up your mechs or slow them down based on um, different things. And you can recover fusion cores off the battlefield. There's double heatsink kits, so these can easily be installed um, on any mech. So you notice the heat efficiency changes instantly when I take that off and put it on. Uh, double heat sinks are far more easy to come by um, on enemy mechs, that is, that you can find and grab. Uh, ER medium lasers, small laser triple plus, uh, light ferro, fibrous armor, which reduces the weight of your armor. Um, but you can see here it's using up dynamic slots. So if I remove this, you can see it's using up, you know, uh, five slots here. Um, and endo steel is the same way, so all the orange color one here is from the endo steel. Uses up slots, but it reduces the tonnage. 
so you can um, reduce the overall uh, um, or increase the overall weight that you can actually carry on the mech by using light ferro and endo steel and it just fills up slots. So you've also got uh, your gyro here um, and the gyro you can there's a variety of different types of gyros that can the you know ultra light gyro that can actually add weight back onto the mech. Um, there's stability gyros, all kinds of gyros that you can get. Um, some will increase your defense, stuff like that. Um, engine compact, so this is the different type of engine that you can have installed in the mech. So this is a compact engine. Now it's adding three and a half tons um, and requires one slot, but it increases the engine weight factor by 50%. So if we take that off, you'll notice we got three and a half tons more to work with, but we have, but we're losing space here, right? So we gain a little bit of space by putting this in. This isn't needed. Um, so, I, you know, in starting off, I would pull this out. But, um, you know, you'll find some mechs that have that. Now, you'll also get some mechs that are like older versions of mechs where you've got armor that's like actually actually plus percentage point per point of armor just because it's old armor. Same thing with like, you know, you can find an, uh, internal combustion engines on mechs would actually increase weight. So you can pull those off, right? Um, so there's a lot of different things here uh, to pay attention to. Um, the cockpit slot up here obviously is for your the cockpit of your mech. There are, are tons of different variations of cockpits in this game. Each gives you um, good bonuses. Some of them actually reduce the uh, the weight as well. So it might be like a two-ton cockpit instead of a three-ton cockpit, but that's considered like a small cockpit and your pilots actually have minuses to hit for that. So, you know, just, you know, keep in mind what you're looking at here. Now, generally what I like to do when I'm building my mechs, um, as you notice, we don't start off with any, any gear. Normally in Rogue Tech, uh, you would start off with whatever equipment that you selected at the beginning, plus a few other items. Right now, we're not starting off with anything. In future versions, the items that you selected at the beginning might show up here right away. Uh, the older versions of Rogue Tech, they didn't show up right away. You either needed to enter into combat and come back or jump systems or something, and then it would update. Um, but we'll have to see when the newer versions come out, how they intend to get around that. But if you have a few items here, then you can begin to change your mechs around slightly. What I normally like to do um, in Rogue Tech, let's just get back out of here for a second. Um, so. We've got all these mechs to start off with. What I normally like to do, rather than jumping into a contract right away, because if you look up here, we got two million C builds, right? We got lots of cash. There's no need to jump into a combat right away unless you're really thirsty for it. What you might want to consider doing is for someone like a Centurion, for instance, right? You can go in here and let's say, you know, the LRM ammo is in the torso and you're like, damn man, I don't want that in the torso because if I get torso hit, hit with only 65 armor points, it might blow up. So the first thing you do is you want to sh ship that down to the legs, right? You've got time here. It's going to be two days and 1400. You got time in the cache to go in and lay out your lance like you want it to be laid out, right? You will pull the AC-10 ammo down as well. So that's the first thing I do is I go in and look at all my mechs and say, all right, how is it laid out? Am I happy with the amount of armor, right? Um, because in this case, I may say, you know what? The LRM-10, it's not really doing anything for me. So maybe I'll take the LRM-10 out. Um, or maybe I'll take out a ton of ammo because, you know, we don't need to fire 24 times in a match. So we take a ton of ammo out for the LRM-10 and then add that extra ton into armor, right? So spend the time taking a look at your lance, what you have, what you want to do with it, um, and lay it out. You've got the time, right? Our financial statement right now is just, you know, 368,000. We could last several months not doing anything and be fine, right? So just go in, take a look at your mechs, um, and, you know, lay them out how you like them. Now, I personally am not a jump jets person. So the first thing I would do in the fire starter is I would pull off all six of these jump jets, and that's three tons right there, right? You can increase the armor. Um, you know, you may find that it's only a couple of tons to increase all the armor up to max, but if I'm not going to use them, why have them in there? Use the tonnage for something else. Or I might want to pull out, if I like the jump jets, I might want to pull out two small lasers, um, simply because, you know, they're not going to be doing too much. Um, I'll be saving some heat because it's really heat inefficient right now. 
right? Alpha Strike 60. So I'm not going to be using all my weapons all the time. So I might pull out the small lasers and use a ton for armor, right? Just think about what you want to do and how you want to do it. Um, also, you might find, like, let's say, you know, you've got 350 ton mechs here, right? You, you have a look at the white, right? And you say, you know what? Gosh, I wish my, you know, my um, crab was more heat efficient. Well, we look at this guy and we say, well, we have the compact engine in here, so we can pull that out. But now we've got, like, you know, three and a half tons remaining. We don't really have anything to put in, but we can pull out the endo steel and the ferro fibers now, right? And use the rest for armor, I think, or is this guy maxed out? He's pretty much maxed out. Um, but we can pull these out, right? Because we don't need them. Um, and leave the mech, like, we'll max out the armor. Leave the mech like this. We're only short a little bit, right? It's not much, but it's maxed out. We can confirm this. On it. Right? So on it. basically, no he's done. still the same fighting capacity as he was before. But now we can go into our crab and say, well, you know, the crab, I like the mech, but, you know, it's, you know, extremely heat inefficient. I want this guy to be better at, at uh, firing for longer with the two large lasers. So now we go to our equipment and we've got an endo steel and we got light ferro, right? We got three tons remaining. Check the store out. And we go pick up three heat sinks. All right, go to equipment. Oh, yeah, the other thing too is you want to have a look at the weapon mounts. I'll, we'll talk about that in a second. So, you know, you can pick up three heat sinks, right? That's a ridiculous price for heat sinks, but you know, you can go in and you can pick up heat sinks. Um, you can also find things like weapon mounts. Now, these go in the arms of mechs and grant extra accuracy bonus. Now, if you want to have an accuracy mech, these things are great because um, let's just buy this one for now. New equipment um, available. And a melee gyro, if you have a melee mech, once again, melee accuracy, defense against being hit by melee attacks, and stability. But we're going to take two heat sinks. It's ridiculous price, but we'll buy them anyway. Alright, so now we've got two more heat sinks that we can drop in this guy. So let's do that. And we're going to take our weapon mount and we're going to put it on this arm. Because now um, we get an extra bonus to hit with this large laser. Right? We're not going to be milling with this mech anyway, so I'm not really worried about it. Got a half ton of armor left, so let's make sure we add it to the arms. And the legs don't really have all that much armor so let's add a bit more to the legs and we're done so just switching those things around it's nine days no big deal just confirm that right all right so game. that's my suggestion for mech base so just kind of go in look at all your mechs figure out what you have and how you're going to make these guys efficient to play to your play style if you can increase the chance to hit, do it. It's always better to be uh, better chances to hit. So if you have weapons in the torso that you m might work better in the arm, switch them out. Um, spend a little bit of time doing that when you first start. Um, it'll make the game more enjoyable and give you um, a better feel when you first start. You'll be happier with what you're working with. Um, then we're going to go to engineering real quick here. So a little bit of engineering tips. I'm sure most people who play Battletech already know what to do here. but what you want to do is you want to go to power systems. Now you'll notice here, um, actually let's go back real quick. Um, each of these is pretty much the same as in regular Battletech. Um, the only difference being where you're getting your tech points from. So repaired power conduits is the thing you first want to start off with. Um, it only takes 10 days to repair and you get an extra tech point. Roger right? So we're going to purchase I'll that. The, the next thing you want to maybe look at in repair and refit uh, is your repair for scaffolding. But once this power system is done, you'll get another option here, and your second mech bay will open up. Now, the way that Rogue Tech is set up, if you have two mech bays, you can repair two mechs at once. So here it says, enable second repair bay, allowing work on two mechs at 50% efficiency. So the next thing that actually shows up here, I believe, is improved automation. And when improved automation shows up, it allows your second mech bay to operate at 100%. So right now, if I do this, right, so um, the first mech bay here will work on one mech at 100%. The second one will be worked on at 50%. I believe with the improved automation, both mech bays will be working at 100%. So you can repair two mechs at once. And then when you go to manage your tasks, you can manage your tasks a little better and get things repaired a lot faster. And the same thing applies with the third mech bay. You can have three mech bays up and running. 
there'll be another thing here that allows you to get uh, that set up to uh, another 100%. So three mech bays working at 100% will have three me mechs being repaired full speed um, based on the number of days it takes for them to repair be repaired. So if you have a, a mech that takes seven days, a mech that takes five days, and a mech that takes one day, with one mech bay, it'll be like, it'll be a total of 13 days, right? Seven plus five plus one will be 13. With two mech bays operating at 100%, it'll be a total of six days because the first mech bay will be working on the seven day mech. The second one will be working on the five day mech. It'll be done in five days. And then the, the one day mech will be moved in. So you'll have two days left in the first mech, one day left in the second mech. And those two days will go by for a total of seven days and all your mechs will be repaired. The same thing with the three mech bays. So if you have a seven, a five and a one, once again, it'll be, it'll be done in seven days because all three mech bays will be going at once. But if you have like, like I'm running two lances in my Cold Forge series. So if you have eight mechs being repaired, you can slot them and move them around in tasks so that you're minimizing the amount of time all mechs are spending in the mech bay. You can get the mechs that you want to have fixed out a lot faster. Um, that's the key thing. So when you first start off uh, in ship upgrades, so if you're not really sure, my recommendation is power systems first, get the second mech bay up and running second, and then go to training modules or the uh, improved automation to get your mech bay running at second and then training modules. But training modules you want to have up and running because you're getting 30 experience points per pilot per day for each pilot. And if you've got a lot of pilots, it's really it's really a no-brainer because this is really cheap, right? 90,000 uh, gives you plus, more, plus one morale for your crew. Um, but that 30 experience points a day for people that are just sitting around, um, is a huge bonus, right? And it's only 10 days, right? It average costs 400 new or 400 uh, C bills. Sorry, I'm thinking shadow run. Uh, 400 C bills per um, per month. So it's nothing, right? So that's a that's obviously a bonus to have. Uh, and then if you can get up to training module two and three, that's good too. But having this training module one at the start is kind of important. Now the lounge down here. Once you've got those done, if you've got money for the lounge. I would recommend going for the lounge. The extra two morale and one tech point um, can really help out. 225,000, not very much. And it reduces your average cost per month, right? So you're, you're minusing the cost per month, right? Completion in 10 days. Because um, everyone's, of course, more relaxed and stuff, right? So, yeah. So that's another thing to keep in mind. So just, you know, when you're going through this, um, Basically, have a look and see what each thing is giving you. This one's giving you beta pods, giving you plus one morale. Um, you know, these you're not getting a lot of points in BattleTech. You get a lot of points for each one of these. These ones you're only getting one tech point. So um, the cost and time may be low. Oh, sorry, here it is automation. So this allows the second repair bay to work at 100%. Six days, one tech point, 350,000. So um, we can get that up and running. So, um, you know, these three. Or the next three that you want to go with. Uh, yeah, so that's basically it in a nutshell. Uh, I'm not going to do combat here, but the one thing you want to keep in mind um, when you're fighting, just go online. Um, and I, I'm not saying I'm not kind of trying to toot my own horn for watching my series, but because um, I'm obviously not the best uh, BattleTech player out there, uh, I'm not the obviously the best BattleTech YouTuber out there uh, or Rotech YouTuber out there. Um, but have a look at people's series um, and see what their playstyles are like, especially in the early game because um, keeping maximum evasion up high, so if you're choosing salvage, getting things like um, ECM suites or stealth armor, um, while it may not seem like it's that great um, for w one extra evasion pip, so what? Well, with an ECM and stealth armor, well, it's two evasion pips. And evasion is life in this game. The more evasion you generate, the way harder it is the, for the enemy to hit you, especially early on. You think you're having problems to hit? The more evasion that you have, those novice pilots are having just as bad of time as you are, right? So, um, and then at that point, it's just kind of the same as Battletech. Use your cover. Make sure you're in cover. Um, hide from potential threats. Don't let turrets shoot at you. Uh, while you're fighting mechs, so hide behind rocks while you're fighting mechs, then go after the turrets, things like that. Um, just common sense stuff. Um, so I'm going to leave it there. That's kind of like just the opening of Rogue Tech. Things to consider. I think the most important things, um, if I was to go back and have a look at the whole 
uh, video we just finished, the most important things are um, paying attention to your mech pilot skills at the beginning, um, making sure that they've got good enough gunnery, um, and also pilot and tactics. Having the initiative is important in this game, so just be very wary of that. Making sure you're happy with your mechs, your mechs loadouts, right? Make sure you don't have a mech with low armor with ammo in the torso. Put it in the legs, right? Places that are going to be harder to hit, like or an arm or something, so that it doesn't blow through to the center torso. Or if you can run with a mech without arm, um, ammo at the start, if you're worried about blowing up, that's something else to do. Um, and engineering, making sure you choose the right engineering things at the start. Um, so that you're equipped to handle the, you know, because like I said, you have to replace armor and that takes time. So the more mechs that you can get into a mech bay and being repaired faster, the much better it's going to be. You're still going to have to wait for your pilots to be back at 100%, like five or six days usually at the beginning of the game. Um, sometimes up to seven days. But um, it, it's important to have those mechs done and fixed by that time. So the faster you can fix them, obviously the better. So with that being said, I'm going to end the episode here. Um, keep in mind, like I said, once again, you got lots of money at the very beginning of the game. Use it to trick out your mechs. Make sure you're happy with them. Um, and don't be afraid. Like if you if you can't find a contract on this planet, go to the next one. If you don't if you don't like what's here, go to the next planet. You got lots of time to do that. Um, sometimes I'll take up to two months before I start into a battle, just because I want to make sure I'm you know shopping the stores for anything that I might be able to use, like weapon mounts or things like that. Don't be afraid to wait a little bit before you get into combat. Um, just feel comfortable with going in, and 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 at, most of all, just go and enjoy the game because this is. A really fantastic game, and I, I really believe that once you start into Rotec and you're enjoying playing Rotec, you'll probably never go back to the original Battletech. I tried, and as much as I love the game, don't get me wrong, the original Battletech I think was a fantastic game when it first came out. I think the Rotec experience is more what Battletech should be. That's just my two cents. You know, take it for what you will. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna end this here, and I just wish everybody happy Rotecing. <laughs>